Kia ora, hello, I'm Philip Duncan and thank you so much for joining us for our Friday update for April the 28th. We've got a subtropical low on its way to the upper North Island and the western side of the South Island and it's likely to bring a month's worth of rain and on top of that uh, it's also going to bring well above normal temperatures for the first week of May. So we've got that to deal with. Also Australia, some heavy rain falling just south of Sydney. So a few things to talk about. On the animated wind map, high pressure crossing over New Zealand at the moment. It was a cold start in the South Island this morning, but a mild start for the north. And those easterly winds, they're only going to pick up further over the days ahead as the low uh, up here in the north drops southwards and the high over us moves eastwards. And over in Australia, a cold front moving up into New South Wales is going to stall and a new low pressure zone is going to form and that's going to produce some heavy rain. So we'll talk about Australia's rain in a second. We'll first of all kick off though with the seven day expected rainfall in New Zealand as this low comes down. Now the low itself is not overly stormy, but it's going to create a squash zone. That's when you get those windy, um, usually northeasterlies, stuck between that incoming low and the outgoing high. So that's going to see that rain piling up in that northeastern and northern side of the country. Heaviest rain looks to be around the Coromandel Peninsula and Bay of Plenty. We're seeing rainfall totals, maybe a bit hard to read the, the scale on this one. Just worry about where I'm pointing to because that's where the heavy rain is. So we're seeing heavy rain around there. Now on the scale, that goes up to 200 millimeters in this area here. And we could be seeing even higher totals than that, shifting around a little bit. So really Northland and Auckland, Coromandel Peninsula, Bay of Plenty, even East Cape, although more so on the Bay of Plenty side, and then further down into the South Island, all looking like they'll get, in some areas, 100 to 200 millimetres of rain. And then you go to the South Island, the Nelson Ranges, an area that can see slips uh, even with less than 100 millimetres, and we're forecasting over 150 for places like the Takaka Hill, and over 200 millimetres down here on the West Coast. Now that's actually usually less problematic because the big rivers, they're sort of built for it. But further up around Nelson and up around the North Island, that sort of rain over 100 millimetres can cause a few problems. Now over in Australia, also some heavy rain coming through here. It's mostly south of about Wollongong down to around about Batemans Bay. So those areas down there are going to be seeing some uh, heavy totals or heavy rainfall up and over 125 millimetres for some of you, and a little bit spilling over inland as well, heading sort of more towards Bathurst. Right, let's have a look at the forecast for Saturday. So in comes this subtropical low. Now, for a time, it's a bit stormy out at sea, but you know, not gonna cause too many issues there. The northeasterly winds are going to pick up. Um, Kingston, I should sort of mention them on Norfolk Island. It'll be windy and wet there, uh, but hopefully not too problematic. And then down around New Zealand, you've got showers starting to develop in that windier nor'easter, and that front over here around Sydney, it starts to stall. By Sunday, that stalled front turns into a low pressure zone. You can see that heavy rain uh, that I was just talking about here. And then the low to the north actually starts to weaken a wee bit. It's not really so much about the low itself coming in, it's more about the squash zone in between. There's the low, there's the high, the squash zone halfway between the two. It's a very windy nor'easter, it'll be up to 70 to 90 k's an hour, some of the gusts will be, uh, so there could be a few power cuts starting to develop in the north of the country, mostly north of about Auckland, and then that heavier rain starts to move in. Now as we go into next week, uh, the low gets even weaker, but that subtropical airflow from sort of around the Cook Islands and Tonga area, that is still coming down. Very windy as well. So again, gale force winds gusting over 70, 80 k's an hour. So a few isolated power cuts are possible. The rain is very patchy. The further you are down towards the high pressure zone, the lighter that rain will be. The further north you are towards the low, that's where you'll see the heavier falls. So next week, it's not so much about one big sort of heavy burst of rain, it's more about days and days of nor'east winds blowing and patchy rain moving through with isolated heavy falls. It is hit and miss in some locations because of our mountains and ranges that get in the way, but this is a, a little storm or a little stormy system, I should say. It's not really a storm so much on its own, but it's a system that's gonna create with that high, these strong winds and slow moving rain. Slow moving is the reason that we're going to see those 
higher rainfall totals. And the other feature, a cold front coming into Adelaide on Tuesday, spreads out across Victoria and into New South Wales by the middle of next week. Classic autumn windy southwester. On the New Zealand side, nothing classic really about this setup for uh, autumn, although we do get this in autumn, but not so prolonged as we've seen over the last few weeks. So the high is still out there, the low has gone, but that subtropical airflow that is still coming in. So the middle of next week, still warmer than average across New Zealand, and not a great deal of change on Thursday. Actually, classic autumn setup is the windy weather, the windy uh, westerlies, which are starting to move in here. So perhaps a bit more of a northerly at the top of the country, nor'west is elsewhere, windy weather, gales in exposed areas, that will push temperatures up along that eastern side, and the rain carries on uh, around the western side of the country. And our final map, extra long range today, shows you that there still could be a burst of very heavy rain at the end of next week. This is a very slow moving uh, setup. It could be thundery and it could cause localized flooding at the end of next week. Now all these maps I've just showed you could still move around a wee bit, right? It's uh, not 100% locked in where the heaviest of those falls will be, but just to be aware, a burst of wind, a burst of rain, well actually a burst of wind, a, a, a number of days of rain off and on, Check out ruralweather.co.nz for more details because the graphs and maps we have there are very detailed at working out when the peak of the wind, peak of the rain is likely to be. But that is the setup. It's a messy forecast for New Zealand for our first week of May. That's all from me. Have a great weekend and we'll see you again on Monday the 1st of May and also we'll have our next Climate Watch update taking a look at how the rest of May is shaping up and also winter. It's just around the corner. We'll be taking a look at that as well. We'll see you then. Have a safe weekend.